I recently flew to New York for the Google Developer Groups event, and this was the Build with AI event. And I'm bringing this up because during the time there, I got to meet with so many incredible students who were studying computer science, and I noticed something. I noticed a trend as to what within computer science they were studying, what jobs they were looking for. It all had this underlying thread, which we'll get to in a bit here. These students, these individuals, whether it be in that situation or in general, they are focused on the most in-demand skills. They want to stay ahead, be as competitive as possible. But what jobs won't make it throughout that? What jobs with the tech industry booming and continuously creating different technical jobs, what jobs are going to fall behind, especially nowadays with AI? And I see on YouTube or social media a lot of times, the pros, the, and even we talk about it, what jobs will be created. But very little do people really take a step back and are willing to have the conversation at least around what jobs will be taken away. What jobs, if we look five years or 10 years down the road, might not be here. And that's what we are going to dive into today. We are going to talk about what jobs, what skills will become less in demand because of AI and really everything that is going on within tech. But then also too, what skills and jobs will continue to grow in demand. I'm going to base this not only on my past experiences, you know, going to these different events, hearing from people, I mean, I'm literally in Las Vegas right now at a tech conference learning more about just this, but also to at the Google event, uh, at this event, so many different areas where I'm hearing from thought leaders and I wanna share with you what skills are looking ahead, going to continue in demand, but then also to have a very candid conversation about what jobs might not make it in the next few years or be at least very low in demand. All right, let's get into it. First up, let's talk about the skills that will continue to decrease, not increase, we're getting really candid here, that will continue to decrease in demand. And where is this information coming from? This is coming from, well, pretty much what we see on a daily basis within the job market. What types of skills are going up in demand and what are we seeing less of? The first one is manual dexterity and repetitiveness. So this is no surprise, especially when we think of AI and how it is able to automate so much of our tasks. So things such as jobs that involve repetitive manual tasks, such as assembly line workers, packaging, they are all prime candidates for automation. Now listen, even these roles, they will evolve. People in these roles will find different ones or evolve with this technology or even learn to operate a lot of this technology. It's moving fast, but it's not moving fast to the point where people can't keep up with it, which is a positive. This isn't here to scare anyone, but just to start really thinking about where you can upskill. The next one is around narrow specific tasks. And once again, I hope this isn't a surprise. Every time we think of automation or AI, it can do these narrow specific tasks and it only is getting better. I mean, who was it? It was Sam Altman who recently said that they are working on at OpenAI, AGI being possible. And when we think about that, AI not only being able to do simple tasks, but being able to, once it completes that task to the next task, that really makes you have to stop and think as to jobs that are doing these very specific tasks will eventually start or even are already starting to decrease. Now, the next one on the list, this one could be a bit controversial, if you will, or at least some people might disagree. And I think it's because it's still a very sensitive topic. But the next on my list I have is routine customer service. Now, hear me out. Chatbots such as AI powered, uh, you know, when we think of ChatGPT, when we think of Claude, these are able to do, have good conversations. Even now when you go on websites, a lot of times you might not even realize it, but in that little box where you are typing for help, you are not talking to a human, you are talking to an AI. I mean, I hope you realize that, we're a tech people here, but if you're not and you're watching this, most of the time it is an AI. That will continue to improve as the conversation with AIs are trained and get better and better, smarter and smarter as these models do anyways. And also too, as they continue to learn more about the data and interact with humans, they will become better. Right now, I think you can kind of tell the difference whether you are interacting with a human or not. Now, I do think there is going to be a huge need for customer service. And what I do think will happen with this one is when we think about companies who offer, uh, you know, whether it's you wait for hours on the phone or you are ch talking to a chatbot, when we think of really premium companies, what will happen is they will start offering human services. And I really think it's gonna be marketed like that, where it's though, we have real humans help you versus it's always pressing zero, press one on the phone and always speaking just to an automated system. These companies who really wanna stand out, they're going to start hiring humans or we will see a demand for customer service actually surge is into almost this prestigious job that is done by less people, but the people who do it, do it really well. That's just my prediction, by the way, but I'm curious to hear. Do you agree with this, disagree? Leave in the comments. 
All right, now let's get into the good stuff. Let's talk about some skills that we are seeing continue to rise and grow or areas that are continuing to grow in demand. The first one I wanna talk about is one that when I've been going to a lot of these conferences, I see over and over again that more people want to get into or are working towards getting into, but equally, there are so much more jobs that need to be filled for this role than currently are. So it's a good sign. It's not that so many people wanna get into it, but there's not enough jobs to fill. It's the opposite and I think it will continue this way. This, of course, is data scientist and data analyst. This is such a popular role right now, and although it will evolve with the use of AI, I mean, we can already see a lot of AI systems doing portions of this job, very small portions, not to the level that it will take over or anything like that, just like how AI can help with coding, for example. It's actually, I have up here on here, so data scientist roles are projected to grow 36% from 2021 to 2031, which is much faster than all other occupations. And this is from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. I had to get really technical there for a sec here. because I really want to highlight just how much in demand this role is continuing to be. Now, there are so much variations to this role based on if you work at a big company, a startup, or anything in between. Now, if you are looking to get into one of these roles, here are two courses that I would recommend. They have great reviews. I am not a data, data analyst, nor am I going to become one, but I do think based on the reviews, the feedback, even from friends that I've heard speak about it, these are two really good course options. Course, I don't need more coffee today. Course options. Next on the list is cybersecurity. I mean, I'm gonna read this stat to you. So the global cybersecurity market is projected to grow from 217 billion in 2021 to 345 billion by 2026. That is from Markets and Markets. That's incredible and you can really see this number continuing to increase especially as tech moves so fast we need more cybersecurity experts people who are both on the technical side but also on the business side who are well versed in this who really understand the backbone to it and why it is so important now here are two courses that i would recommend for beginners if you're just starting your career in cybersecurity you might be further along in your tech career or journey but if you're looking to pivot in this direction the biggest thing though with the first two that i listed is you need to connect with others in the industry already. I can't stress that enough. Go on LinkedIn, find people or even creators who are talking about these specific topics and reach out to them. I mean, that's what I'm here for is to, you know, for inform you, fill you in, educate you and build you up so you can go after these careers because we need more people like you in the industry. Now, the third one I really wanna talk about isn't necessarily a specific skill, but a trend within the workforce that I've really noticed. This trend is consulting. Actually, I saw this I saw this article. Let me see if I can find it and I'll put it up on screen here if I can find it, which was by that Google is rumored, it's not 100% confirmed, it wasn't confirmed by them anyways, to hire more contractors now than full-time employees. Well, that can't be right. I wonder what the stat is. I gotta find that article again. But it's contractors in general, I have noticed this trend, especially since around 2022, where more companies, or big companies anyways, are looking to hire contractors versus the commitment of a full-time employee. Now, there are pros and cons to this. The pro is contractors typically get paid a lot more than full-time employees. They are there for shorter periods of time. You are coming in with your expertise and teaching or educating, consulting, whatever consultants do. I'm just kidding. But consulting these companies. Now, for the company, it's a win-win because it's less risk. They are hiring you for quite a bit of money probably, but they know it's for a shorter period of time. So it's less of a commitment. Now the downside if you are a contractor is depending on how what country you're in and how you have your business set up. It might be something as though you don't have healthcare or you don't have insurance, different things like that might not come with consulting. But what does come with consulting is that higher paycheck, so hopefully you can put some money towards some of those things if needed. Now I've seen consulting really blow up in throughout the tech industry as a whole, whether you're a developer, a designer, project manager, Consulting is such an interesting area. It's something that I'm really interested in, actually. Um, I've consulted before with a lot of big tech companies from Meng, if you will, and it's some of the best experiences I have. Now, you're probably asking, Kay Tiff, I'm very interested in consulting, but how do I get started? The easiest way to get started in consulting is by building your personal brand. And I know some of you maybe feel like, well, I don't wanna start a YouTube channel, Tiff. I don't wanna start putting myself out there like that. There are so many other ways you can. One of the best ways is even through blogging or posting on LinkedIn some of your projects. Now, obviously that might not 
land you your first client per se, but starting to do that consistently and sharing your learnings or what you are building for other clients is super helpful for visibility. The other way though too is through freelancing sites. Now I've worked with so many great freelancers that started out on Upwork or mainly Upwork or Fiverr even as well, or the relationship started out on these platforms. And then what has happened is you work with a client for so long, or I worked with you know people on these platforms for so long, and I bring them off of the platform, meaning, oh, I need some water. Meaning, uh, I don't know if you can hear my voice. I've been up for a long time today because I flew in from Vegas this morning. That's just a side note here. Wait, scratch that. I didn't fly in from Vegas. I flew from Toronto to Vegas. You can tell my sleep deprivation is catching up to me. Okay, back to the topic though. Using these sites like Upwork or Fiverr are great ways to get clients. And then from there, as you build long-term relationships, you can take that off of these platforms if you so choose. And of course it makes sense too. All right, those are some of the jobs that we, or skills even, that we are seeing continue to decline and probably will. But then on the upside, here are some of the skills that are continuing to grow in demand. The most important thing overall is continuing to be a learner and evolve with this technology. This doesn't have to get exhausting. Don't try and constantly keep up like it's a rat race. Take it day by day. Stay curious. That's honestly the best thing you can do. All right, I was gonna say I need more coffee, but I definitely don't. I think I need to go for a nap now. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, AI, future tech, all the good stuff related videos. Leave in the comments what skills you are currently learning. I would love to learn more about that as well. All right, talk to you soon. Bye everyone.